Hi friends. Well, my last video, I started inside and then I came outside. And I got a comment that said, much less echo in the audio outside than inside. So I came outside today. And um, hey, subscribe and uh, gong that bell. I think I'll move around the garden and uh, you can come and see what area I wind up in, in my half acre of lakefront uh, gardens in Ajijic, Jalisco, Mexico. Well, today we're going to go and see the round pyramids, the Guachamontones in Teochitlan, Mexico. It's northwest of here, um, 104 kilometers. I wanted to say something that I thought about since I've been there. This place is uh, reportedly 2,500 years old, and Chichen Itza, um, one of the seven wonders of the world here in Mexico, famous pyramid, uh, is 1,500 years old. That means that between the time the Guachamontones, the round pyramids, were being used and the um, Chichen Itza was started, and Chichen Itza went on for 600 years, used there as an important um, ceremonial place for the Mayans. All of these cultures, what strikes me is not how old they are, but how long they were used. From 2,500 years ago to 1,500 years ago, that's a 1,000, and then they used that place uh, in Chichen Itza for 600 years. That's 1,600 years that this culture went on. And even though it's a number of different cultures, the the Toltecs, the Olmecs, the um, Mayans, the Aztecs, several more texts in there. The fact is that it was a culture that progressed as um, the same kind of culture. Of course, it changed over the course of 1,600 years, but... Um, they all had ball courts. When I saw the ball court, and I've been to the ball court in Tulum, I realized that this area of Mesoamerica was used by these cultures, who, which changed, but not a lot. They, all, they had a ball court 2,500 years ago. They were using a ball court 1,600 years later. The culture lasted for 1,600 years. The United States turned uh, 247 on July 4th, 2023. We have to go for another 1,353 years to last as long as that culture did. And the way the United States is going today, I think it's okay in my lifetime, but 1,300 years? If you're in kindergarten, buckle up. The world's going to change. Anyway, hey, let's get in the van and go for a ride today. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. On our way to Teochitlan, see the Guachamontones the round pyramids, and maybe to eat some frogs out of the famous frog leg. Frog Lake. Frog Leg Lake. Famous Frog Leg Lake. Just try saying that without practicing. I think this is take six on the editing voiceover. Frog Lake Frog Leg Lake, Frog Leg Lake, Frog Leg Lake, Frog Leg Lake, Knee Deep. That uh, <clears throat> sign you saw for 
Mascota. I went there one time. It's like closer to Puerto Vallarta than it is to Guadalajara. Yeah. It's up in the mountains. I stayed in a hotel that was 400 years old. And the key to the room was like this long. A big old key with like two lugs on it. Yeah. Similar to this one. Uh, no, I didn't steal the key. Had this for many years. That's the size of my RV. I don't have the tag wheels in the back, but uh, 40 foot with the side radiator. We are going down a narrow street in Teuchitland on our way to the Round Pyramids. I was here like about 12 years ago and I bought something at this gift shop that's going to be right here around the corner. It's an artisan who works on um, obsidian, but I bought something different there. Here's a picture of it on my mantle at home in Ahihik. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's that guy right there. I bought that at that gift shop. Buenos dias. 30 per persona. Okay. Mayores de 60 no pagan. 77. Pero tres, tres otras. Okay. 90. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. This is the parking area. Go inside that museum. Okay. Yeah, you know the pyramids are 400 meters on a hill. Yeah. Are you going to need a guide? Um, you want a guide? Well, Why not? Around. Sure. Yeah. Yes. You want to be the guide? How much? 200 pesos for the group. Stop me in. Okay. Where should I park? On the left side. That's as far as I can drive? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Huh? I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve bucks for a guide? Sure. <laughs> no one in this van is old. George. Uncle Jerry is pretty spry for his age, but he's like ten years older than Grandma. <laughs> Thanks, George. I love you. Guachimontones in uh -huh. West Mexico. The name of the game is Ulama. That's and what they play in the ball court? Yeah. <laughs> Ulama? Ulama is the name of the game uh -huh. in West Mexico, and it's the most difficult game because you have to play 12 hours, sunrise to sunset, three to five players in each team, never more than five or less than three. And a ball was made up with rubber that is a liquid that comes from the tree that is a sticky. This diameter, four kilograms, around 10 pounds. Wow. And you can use only your hips, protecting by a uh, skin, uh, deer skin belt, like yeah. this big, that we call chimali. Not tennis shoes, not t-shirt, just a belt. And you have to imagine a flat clay area and a line in the middle. A old man sitting there like a yacht. People watching the ritual on both sides. Uh -huh. Families in conflict, one sitting there, one more here. To try to resolve the dispute like a mother court. You have a problem between two powerful families. They, they they used to, to, to play to resolve the dispute. It's and better they, than to be a play, a uh, fight, you know? <laughs> and they might have to play 12 hours? 12 hours is the game, yeah. <laughs> so I'm wondering, they play for 12 hours. You may notice I'm out of breath. See that building down there? That's where we parked 400 meters uphill. <laughs> did they have to do the hill before they played? Yep. Or did they live up here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and as I told you, it's like volleyball, but with your hips. Volleyball, but with your hands. Yeah, no fingers in this case. Yeah. Imagine a line in the middle and the ball is on the line. If you are the captain, you are in front of the ball. 
when the sun appeared in the morning, the grandfather that is close to you, he says, start the game. Okay, uh -huh. take the ball in your hands carefully and throw the ball into the section, like volleyball. When the ball is on the air, one of those players has to see the ball when it's coming down. With the if, it's if it's political, they don't, nobody dies. Nobody dies. But if it's a religious, when is going to happen a religious game? Uh, well, I'm guessing somebody dies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is the idea. <laughs> that is. During many times, the raining season doesn't come and all is dry. You don't have food or too much water at the same time and destroy all the agricultural area. Uh -huh. That is a problem. Grandfather started to scare about it and they say, let's practice again like a prey. Like, hey, God, help us because we don't have food. Best player had to play. If we are the winners, if you are the captain, you die, only you. They used to cut your so, head inside the ball court. So it's not the loser that dies, nah. it's the winner because nah. it's a privilege to go as the sacrificial person yeah. to help with the reins. Yeah, that is the idea. And yeah, they are trying to help you because you are a high status person. Okay. If so, you're an average person, your tomb is in your house. So the, <laughs> so the priests might be buried, you say, 22 meters? Yeah, that is That's the, deep. The, the, the deeper tomb in the area. Yeah, because you're closer down to the nine levels of paradise. Yes, that is the idea. Yeah. But if you're a regular person, you get buried in the corner of your house? Uh, yes, one meter Four and meter. 50 centimeters deep. Huh. Three meters and um, one and 50, sorry, like this big. Okay. Or like this tall. I think I want to be a regular person. So there are five <laughs> tombs in here, but are they deep ones or shallow ones? No, deeper. <coughs> deep ones? Got high status guys in this area. So uh, they might be buried 22 meters down. This is, uh, yeah. How about the tombs? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Better. Actually, we're here on Super 5. Uh huh? Sharp tombs look like chimneys. Like this. Uh huh. And then there is a tunnel. In a big chamber like this. Okay. It is a complete family on the floor. Oh. And offerings around the bodies. Okay. This is from four to 22 meters deep. Wow. If you are an average person and this is your house, the tomb is inside your house in one of the corners, but no more than one meter, 1.5 meters. So Outside the house. Inside. Inside the house. Yeah. That's what I understood. Yeah. yeah. And this is a chamber. Uh, wow. Like this here. This is uh, a thousand years older than Chichen Itza. Okay. Our guide, Salvador. <laughs> is it possible that when I was here 10 or 12 years ago that the level was about like this? They've dug out a lot more dirt and removed trees. It was only half as much showing when I was here years ago. He's telling us that this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and that it is the only round pyramid in the world. Uh, so a priest sat on the top and watched what was going on here. The common people were encamped and dancing here. And on these mounds, uh, they had uh, buildings and shelters for the higher class people to watch what was going on in the religious ceremonies. Mexico has a lot of mountains. But here, they have a lot of water, and apparently, they have a lot of frogs. The frog leg restaurants down here are supposed to serve the best frog legs in Mexico. Over there in the clouds is Mount Tequila, which is the Vulcan de Tequila. I have big pieces of obsidian from that mountain, the, the other side of it. Out here in my garden at home in Ajijic is the largest piece of obsidian that I collected from Mount Tequila. I put my foot in the picture so you could see how big it really is. The peak of Mount Tequila is 2,980 meters above sea level. That's 9,776 feet. And um, there's a place on the autopista that cuts through the rock a hundred feet walls of obsidian on each side of the freeway. And all the stonework that we've done here on the property at home, 
I've put obsidian chunks in it. Just kind of like a trademark thing. And here it is in this walkway. My signature pieces of obsidian. And here it is. Obsidian there. Some more there. Okay, back to the tour of the Guachamontones in Teochitlan. Oh, one more obsidian thing. That's a piece of obsidian that I got over there from Mount Tequila. And I had this guy made. Oh, let me make it rock. Oh, let's see ball court number one, because in that play we have evidence about human sacrifices. Ball court number one would have been the one I saw 12 years ago. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, was there something about a ring on the side of the wall? No, in this case, uh, we can use rings with Aztecs and Mayas, different uh, styles. Ah, I saw yeah. that maybe somewhere else, maybe yeah. Tulum. Yes. Yeah. Like the Mayas, uh, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, oh, yes. Like this, as a ball, the biggest ball court in, in, the, in Western Mexico, not, not only in this complex, it's 90 meters long and it's from south north. Uh, but when we were digging and inside this platform, the team, who was digging, they found many human bones in bad condition, but no head. And this is all evidence to talk about human sacrifices. Where's the heads? Uh, laboratory. Uh, uh. Yeah, they used to put the head in another place as a trophies. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. sometimes that's why when you are digging, you need to be careful, it's so slow, a pig and a Right, 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 <laughs> yeah. This is number one. Should be like number two, but 10 meters higher than that one. And uh -huh. 12 platforms around circle number two only has 10. Right. And that is a natural amphitheater. Uh -huh. You have to imagine many platforms from right. the bottom to the top. Because if, if you are talking as a priest on top, uh -huh. that people can hear very well. Because the acoustic effect is very clear R in this area. Right. It's natural about this. So <laughs> this would be the largest one if it were all dug out. Yes. How much farther down? It's like one meter and 20 centimeters deep, but the, the company destroyed 60% on top. Oh, oh okay. That's why we cannot reconstruct it again, because in Mexico, as I told you, we have rules. Right. Yeah, I think we have a camera to, mm -hmm. to watch 24 hours now. And you can't go up there anymore. No, not actually. Cause, yeah. Uh, in the past, because I went over that way yeah, on a path side, right, around and up to the top. Six side road to but get the top. Because the view is very nice up 12 there. Twelve years yeah. ago, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I think the trees are bigger. <laughs> <laughs> a, a little, but yeah, of course. Now we're going to see number four because it's the only one that we have a square in the middle. We don't have a circle because. These guys were practicing astronomy in that place. Ah. Yeah, very good astronomy. It's mathematics, that is very common in different cultures around the world. In order to legally excavate and rebuild this one, they would have to have 80% of it left by federal law. And they don't have 80%. How much of number one is left? Uh, 60%. 60 percent. Circle number four, they're doing astronomy. That's why this is square. Each corner is a different cardinal point. South, north, east, west. If you are right in the middle, standing, watching the sun falling down in the mountain, uh -huh. you are going to be sure when it's going to happen the solstice. All the equinox when the sun is right in the middle. Ah, okay. Yeah, and at night, there's no artificial light in that time. You can see the constellations like Orion, mm -hmm. Harold, and Feminist, and then the Big Bear in this area, and a, a polar a star in the north, always. Yeah, and here in this area, the three principal altars are representing Orion constellation. Number one, that isn't covered yet, that is in bad condition. And number two, are in a line. Huh? And number three is in the left side. It's the same in Egypt. Keops and Kefren are in a line, and Miserino is in the left side. It's the same constellation Orion, the hunter at night. It's lined up with Orion, mm -hmm. the, the layout of the round pyramids. Yes, that's interesting now. Huh? Yeah.
I know the pyramids are and uh, if it's, this is air planet and this is Ecuador, this is uh, Tropico de Cancer and then Tropico de Capricornio, all uh -huh. the pyramids in the world are in this tropic. Uh -huh. uh, Cancer tropic, doesn't exist a pyramid in this tropic and nobody knows what happened. Land, only in this area, uh -huh. watching with a uh, satellite, more than 2,000 pyramid like that one. More than 2,000. So they think yeah, that on this way. ceremonial yeah. hill, they only have 5% of what's so actually here uncovered. That's about 240-ish acres. Acres. Yeah. Yes. We're halfway down. Going up was more difficult than going down. Let's just leave it there. Uh, I didn't film it going up because I was real busy huffing and puffing. 400 meters, very steep. 400 meters is about a third of a mile and it's a lot steeper than it looks in the video. When I was here, I think it's been 12 years ago, you could drive up here. And um, I think they would still let you if I had declared my age and put my foot down, they might have let me drive up here. But it was some good exercise. Uh, they did uh, let me in for free because I'm over 65. I'm so far over 65, they should have given me some money, but that didn't work out when I suggested it. Now we're gonna go in the Guachimatones Museo. They have these informational plaques along the way. Let's see what they say. Four and a half million years ago, the Earth formed from uh, gases and vapor all getting together and creating some more gravity to attract some more parts. The great continental masses were formed. It doesn't say anything about panacea. That uh, representation must have been after the split up. This one says, uh, the mountain ranges are formed with great valleys and rivers. And the volcanoes erupt and uh, Mount Tequila makes obsidian. Volcanic glass. Twenty three hundred and fifty years ago. Oh, so the mounds had structures on them. There's a picture of what they think they look like. Well, you just got four and a half million years worth of history. Some locals going past. Well, a fun day. Good hair day too, huh? <laughs> We've uh, been here about uh, a little over two hours. Had a guided tour. Very interesting place. Highly recommend uh, a day trip out of Lakeshore area to come over here. It's about uh, 100 kilometers, más o menos. So we're stopping for lunch at the Monte Carlo restaurant down here on the lake. This place is famous for frog legs. Monte Carlo Seafood Grill. I don't know. A frog seafood? I don't know about that. I don't think frogs live in the sea.
trees. Love trees. Well, look at this. Wonder where they get the frogs. Look who's fishing. Where are you? Oh, there you are. A snake. Can you, see, can you see all the fish out there? He's probably just on there. Yeah, I think that snake's having uh, fish for dinner. Or lunch. Or lunch. So reportedly, there's some more wildlife over here. There he goes. Where is it? Right here. Oh, it's an iguana. It's had a had a had a bite of that plant. Pretty big. My frog legs, um, uh, moho, which is sauteed in garlic butter, I think. And this is empanizada, breaded frog legs. You got the same thing, right? Yep. Man, it's well, good. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. And he ordered uh, uh, shrimp, which I don't have. Buttered shrimp, but it's coming, yeah. We have a shrimp cocktail served warm. And down over there we have buttered shrimp, right? How is it? Yep. Good. Well, the tip is mine's uh, sauteed in garlic butter. The breaded ones, the meat doesn't shrink up as much, much more. Much, much more meat it appears to be because mine's all dried out. I guess it's deep fried or something. So order your frog legs empanizada, breaded. Catching a few rays, huh? Oh, you have a friend. <laughs> This is a big restaurant. They have a swimming pool down there. Or maybe that, maybe that's the frog pool. I should be finished editing my video Swimming with the Dolphins by this coming Sunday when I regularly post my videos. It's going to be a good one. Uh, subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be sure not to miss it. So, frog legs taste like chicken. You know what? I don't care. I like chicken better. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.